Hello everybody, Frankie Day for Frankie Day's Models. Okay guys, uh, this half way today for this beautiful cheerful uh, Friday. I've got video number two for my uh, personal build of the uh, Cleveland kit. 1946 Cleveland Beechcraft Bonanza. And uh, so far I've uh, got the half the fuselage shell done on this on the port side. And I gotta make a jig so I can duplicate the right side on top of the port side that's previously done. Okay guys, I've been at this uh, pretty much all all night, night before and pretty much all day yesterday. So I got about two days in this from the since the kit was first uh, entered in the uh, YouTube uh, modeling community. I, uh, I went ahead and made some stills too right behind me as you noticed. So I'm gonna treat this build like I did on the Whitley and also the uh, the El Fade DC-10. Boy, I can't never, I couldn't live that thing down. Boy, what a waste of God. The more I think about it, guys, I just, uh, yeah, it still haunts me. Anyway, uh, on this build here, I got stills behind me. And so, till this thing is done and completely finished, I'll be making stills along with the video to enhance the, uh, the video. Okay. This kit's very ancient. This kit's 74 years old. It's uh, a little younger than me, but almost as old as me. And so it's been around for a long time, this kit has. And uh, not too many, I don't see too many Cleveland kit builds on the internet anywhere. I'm probably the first guy on there in the model community that has a, a Cleveland kit that I'm building. And uh, so I'm very grateful to my late father for letting me have these Cleveland kits. I'm quite sure his spirit's with me right now in this beautiful man cave I got. And enjoying building something that he never got a chance to build yet because uh, he didn't have time. And um, I do. Okay. Now, the Cleveland kits, guys, as I mentioned on the entry of this of this. Uh, of the model itself, Cleveland Kit is probably one of the oldest Bosswood model companies ever was. Uh, right after that, others followed, like Comet, Migau, Gene Du Bois, Jetco, Aristocraft, Kyosho, uh, Sterling, Guillos. Um, Gales Engineering, Easy Built. There's probably a few more out there that hasn't come to mind yet that uh, I soon will ponder about it. I'll probably come to mind. Okay, those are the only companies that followed right after Edward T. Packard introduced the Cleveland Model Company and Supply out of Cleveland, uh, Cleveland Ohio. It's up north, probably about a good 60 miles, well, probably about a 160 miles away from my house and almost to the uh, <clears throat> the border of uh, Michigan and um, all through the Great Lakes, Sandusky, Cedars Point, all through there. Okay guys, um, uh, Mr. Packard was a, was a draftsman and he put his draftsmen into model making and his plans and his kits are very distinctive opposed to what's floating around today. Although the, the method of construction of how the kit was engineered is basically the same. But his kits, he offers a little more than what Willow's offers and the others out there offers. He offers suggestions, blueprints, old, old school modeling, even real pictures of the machine that you can be able to, uh, to build. Back in the day, guys, uh, 1940s, 30s and 50s, even the 60s. When guys got their hands on a kit like that, they put their all into it. They 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 milk that plan dry. Every detail they can discern off the plans, they put it on the model. And uh, his kits are are generally uh, skill level. The modeling skills back in those days is a whole different ballpark opposed to today. And today, we ain't got no builders no more. Every time I go in the hobby shop to get some monocoat or some mirror gloss dope or something like that, 
they don't stock it no more. The reason being is because you got these ready-made stuff nowadays. These uh, RC foam jobs. Heck, you could buy. Oh. Why build something like this, like I did? Why you go to the hobby shop, buy the whole thing like that, and just fly it? It takes the fun out of your hands, guys. You know, it, and, and and it robs a lot of us modelers because we can't be able to buy supplies out of hobby shops because there's favoritism. And that's where the money's at. And these foam and uh, ready to fly and ready to build, almost ready to fly jobs you can you can buy. Most of them is all the other EPA foam. And uh, me, I don't. Uh, I like a build. I, I love to use my hands. And um, anyway, these these Cleveland kits are very impressive kits when they're done. And uh, they're still in business. Still, it's called ClevelandAir.com. And uh, you guys, any plans, any models, airplanes out there you guys want to build, get a hold of uh, his son Donald. I think they're out there in Indianapolis now. They moved out of Cleveland, Ohio to Indianapolis. And Indiana, Indianapolis. And uh, Indianapolis, Indiana, I should say. Anyway, uh, they got a whole, the whole plan list. And these plans are very good because they gave you whole full templates too. They gave you full templates. Of the uh, of the plans and everything. Okay, now we're gonna get back to the build. Now I've been rambling a little bit, guys. I'm just kind of enjoying myself today. Make a good bit here. Okay, behind me, we're gonna swing uh, the camera over here and uh, view and close, and I will uh, explain the sequence of the construction of the Cleveland Bonanza. Okay, guys, we're right now, and I get this thing in uh, in perspective. Okay. All right, guys, we'll sing this little cam. We'll try to get the thing in focus right here so you can see good. Okay, that's good right there. All right, guys, in the beginning of this video here, as you see, our flies. I cut out all these from right here. You got to be very careful when you're cutting these out. What you do is you take an X-Acto knife and cut around these, these parts here. Make sure you don't touch none of these parts here. You cut the inside like this. You pull them out and you just got to cut them out until you get to the line. And you use a, a straight edge as a sanding stick working really well. And I coated these things with uh, ACC glue. The wood is still fresh as a day. It was manufactured back in 1946. I was really astounded about this. These, all these parts came off a duplicate sheet like this right here. This is a le the left side, port side of the assembly. All this here, and this is the right side. Okay, they're all laid out right here for you to show you what was done. Okay guys, clean up this table real well. I'll make sure it's all clean, scraped good and clean. And no bumps, no lumps, no nothing. I laid the plans over here. I put wax paper on here. You don't want to you these plans are precious, they're worth their weight in gold. And they've been used many, many times. Okay, it's pinned down with these needles here with the uh, straight pins. I've got the outside la jara. This is your this is your main your main backbone here. They got to be straight, you got to be right on top of the plan. And make sure it ain't bumped, it don't, it don't move in any direction because it'll interfere with the fit of the part. So once these are pinned in place, as you see right here, then this next you follow. Okay, I cut out all those parts, guys, from that, that, that sheet right there. I showed you on a video on uh, picture one. All the parts are contained inside this little uh, container I have right here to keep my parts keep from getting lost or broken. Okay, these parts now, one by one, I start putting them in place. I use a straight edge. Make sure these things are straight. You want them cocked over or askewed over, you, they got to be straight. A straight fuselage is of great importance. 
of everything. It's got to be straight. Straight as that left, that, this here ruler. I'll lay this thing on the table straight. No daylight right there means you, you're on straight. Take this, take your beam here, take your uh, your former, make sure it's flush on top of here. You got it straight. I use tight bond, bond original glue. It takes, I stuff glue, I stuff uh, really uh, does a good job. I, I, put, I squirt some of that in a cup, I took a paintbrush, and I painted the parts right there with uh, glue and put it in place. I use this here to make sure it's straight. This one over here is straight. I don't use the way CC glue, guys. The only time I use that is a special, it's just something, uh, if I need something to, need to strengthen stuff, like paper or or the, be or the backs of these forms to keep them splitting. Because they will split if you're not very careful. So you got to take heed and be in great care. This is straight. I went back to check this. This is straight. All go. As I got the formers in place, they all see the same method right here. Make sure everything's straight. Everything's straight. All these formers are in position now. All straight, letting them dry. Well, I got this phase of construction right here, fellas. I let this thing dry about four hours. Make sure that stuff was good and hard. And I, like I said, I took an ACC glue in the backs of these things, and I, I soaked them with that. That way, it's really hard. They ain't gonna stick. It's easy to break right down here, as you can see how flimsy it is. When you start laying your stringers across here like that. It puts our little bond on them. It puts a little a binding on those formers there because they're giving the plane st strength, the frame strength. And sometimes they'll break right down over here, like right here. They'll bust easy. They'll bust easy. This ain't too bad. You're gonna sticker. These are the thin ones. These are the ones I was really concerned about. So the, each one of these uh, were soaked with ACC. And when the vapors start steaming, guys, get away from those vapors. That's 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 cyanide right there. You get that stuff in your wind sacks or you get your eyeballs, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. So when the vapors only go up. When they go up, stay away from it, don't breathe none of it. That's the only thing about about ACC glue, I'm real afraid. Because I've seen a lot of good builders that, that, that don't build no more because of cyanide poisoning. Steve Prisky is one of them, one of the great ship builders. He got ACC in his eyes and then he, he's, he's, he's blind to that. And I know one guy built, built a, a Pico a Waco YMF. Now he's toting an oxygen tank. I don't want to go there, guys. I don't want you to go there either. Okay, next picture. Okay, I got the stringers in place. I got them pretty much done now. I go, whew, I got that finished. I'll let that dry a couple hours. You can see how all the ACC out soak in right there. This wood is still good, guys. I had no fears about breaking, but I like to take precautions. When all these stringers have dried, we're using that tight bond glue I used. It's time to pull those pins out. You take those pins, you twist around like this with a pair of needle nose pliers, then pull up. And if you pull them up this way, you're going to break a frame. Because sometimes that glue will stick to the wax paper. So it's good to twirl and pull up. Just a tip. There's more of the construction completed on this thing. This thing is very tight. Very tight together. All the way to the end of the, of the stern post where the filler block comes in. That's got to be sanded to the contour of that uh, the tail block where the last former's at. Okay, I've carefully moved it to the plan now. Well, I did. Took that sanding board right there. I laid this flat like it was on there. This was all done before I moved it from the plan. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I sanded this thing down. After it was all sanded down and smoothed out like the way I want it, I took this bottle of Aerogloss dope, paintbrush, and I dabbled. Aerogloss dope on these stringers and the frames to prepare for covering. After that was done, I let it dry, took a sanding stick, went back, did some more sanding. 
I got it perfect. Went back, gave me like Kodiak Aerogloss dope. She's done. Now she's drying. There's the end results right there. There it is. From their perspective, yours truly, happy man. Okay, here I is. Here this is. Now what I'm going to do now is turn this over. I'm going to lay a piece of timber across here and here and I'm going to build me a jig where it's going to set like this. And then I gotta build the duplicate fuselage like I did this here on top of here. And the fuselage is done. Okay. Alright guys. That's about as far as I got on the Cleveland 1946 Bonanza. As you can see it's coming along pretty well. And I'm gonna make a jig right now and prepare for uh the right side of the shell. Okay, guys, this is Frankie Day signing off. God bless you guys. Stay posted for video number three on this. And uh, God bless you guys. Make mama happy. Take care of your babies and children. Take care of yourself. Stay focused on the road. Spend wisely. Take care of your family, yourselves. Buy yourself a model. Grab another stash. Build on, guys. Build strong. Make mama happy always. Catch you on the next video, number three, the 1946 Cleveland Kid of the Beechcraft Bonanza. Okay. Frankie Day signing off. God bless you guys. Take care, fellas.